Hello, in this video I'll be talking through the total costs of our bungalow re-roofing project, updating you about the water damage to our ceiling, which happened as a result of the roofers not making the roof watertight while the building work was taking place, and I'll be responding to some interesting comments that were left on my previous videos about the roofing work. If you've not yet seen those previous videos, there'll be links in the description. The first one was about why we decided to replace the roof, and about how the roof leak happened, and the second was about converting what was a flat roof into a pitched roof, where I was joined by master carpenter to Robin Clevett and his protege Ed, who did all of the structural timber work. Before we get started though, I thought I should show you around the roof, which is now finished. You'll see all of the ridge tiles have been mortared in place. The roofers did a really tidy job. I think it looks great. These are called hip irons, and I'd always wondered what they actually did. They're screwed into the timber and they're basically designed to support the weight of the ridge tiles while they're being installed and also ensure that they can't slip just in case the mortar ever cracks or fails in future. We have new lead in the valleys and again, really nice, clean, straight lines cut on the tiles. At the eaves under the tiles, we have these comb fillers, which are meant to prevent birds and bugs from getting into the loft space. There's a layer of 450 millimeter wide damp proof coarse plastic underneath the breathable membrane at the eaves, somewhere around here, which actually feels like a bit of a downgrade compared with what we had here before, because about two years ago, when we had all our guttering and fascia boards replaced, we paid extra for plastic eaves felt support trays to be fitted too. So you can imagine my surprise when I came home to find that the roofers had ripped them all out and thrown them in the skip but it's not something I want to get stressed about. And as far as I'm aware, the DPC will do the same job, which is basically directing any water that might get behind the tiles down into the gutters and protecting the timber from moisture. And just generally, the roof just looks so much better now that it has two peaks rather than one peak and a dodgy flat roof at the top as it was before, which I always thought looked a bit strange. All right, so next an update about our water damaged ceiling. Since filming the video showing you the damage, the condition of the ceiling gradually got worse and worse over time. Originally, I was thinking that I could just repair it myself at the roof's expense, of course. And to do that, I would have raked out all of the cracks to make them wider, filled them with easy fill, and then used a scrim tape to help support the filler. And then I'd have layered up the filler with a few coats, sanded it all nice and smooth, the water stains I'd have washed with bleach and water and then I'd have used a stain block paint over the top of the stains and then I'd have redecorated the whole ceiling. However, over time the ceiling kept dropping and the cracks got worse under the weight of all that water that had soaked into the plasterboard. And when I went up into the loft recently to have a look, I found that the heads of the screws that were holding the plasterboard up have pulled through and the plasterboard has dropped by over an inch or 25 millimeters. So as far as I'm concerned, it is now beyond repair. I don't think the results from repairing it would be satisfactory. So I went back to our roofer again and told him that the ceiling needs to be completely ripped down, new plasterboard needs to be installed, and the entire ceiling needs to be re-skimmed and redecorated. We know a good plasterer, so we got him to give us a quote for him to do the work, and we'll just handle the redecoration and putting in new insulation in the loft ourselves. So that's the new plan to sort out the ceiling, and I'll talk more about the costs of all of that stuff later in the video. There were a few comments on my previous videos that I thought I should respond to in video form. The first is about why my roof hasn't been counter battened. Counter battening is where after the breathable membrane is installed, battens would first be installed on top of the rafters vertically or diagonally if you get what I mean, right over the membrane and then more battens are installed over those battens horizontally and that creates extra clearance for any moisture that might get underneath the tiles to run down the membrane into the gutter. Now, I'm obviously not a roofer or an architect or anything like that, so it's not really my place to say whether counter battening is the correct way to do things or not for our particular roof. But what I do know is that what the roofers have done here, i.e. by not counter battening, is pretty standard. One of the main reasons for counter battening is so that water doesn't pool on top of the battens. But as you'll see from this little experiment that I'm doing here, that doesn't happen anyway because the weight of the water and that little bit of slackness in the membrane between the rafters allows for the water to trickle down underneath the battens. So I really don't think the lack of counter battens is an issue. And like I say, this is pretty standard for roof construction. Water shouldn't be getting underneath the tiles anyway. So the membrane is just there really as a last line of defense. So is counter battening a better solution? Probably yes. Is it necessary? I don't think so. I also saw a lot of people mentioning claiming on insurance for the water damaged ceiling. Now it's not for me to decide whether the roofer wants to claim on his insurance for the damage caused or whether he wants to handle it in some other way. Quite frankly, as long as the damage gets fixed to a reasonable standard and I'm not paying for the work myself, then I'm happy. As far as the option of potentially claiming on my own home insurance is concerned, 
It's not something I've looked into because again, the issue needs to be resolved by the roofer. Also got a lot of comments saying that when we moved into our home, we should have started with the roof works before doing any renovation works. And yes, that's really good advice and pretty obvious, but funnily enough, after just buying our new home, we didn't have tens of thousands of pounds spare to pay for a new roof. And we also didn't know at the time just how bad a condition it was in. As I mentioned in the video, it wasn't until November 2021 when we saw that water was getting in. We did pay for a comprehensive survey when we bought the house, but it was, in my opinion, absolutely useless and a total waste of money. Our very expensive survey basically pointed out all of the very obvious issues that weren't really a major problem, and yet somehow missed all of the real tangible problems that we have found since moving in. I'm not trying to discourage anyone from getting a survey when moving home, but in my opinion, I think anyone with a basic level of knowledge about buildings and construction is just as capable of spotting any issues as these surveyors are, if the company that did ours is anything to go by anyway. I'll certainly never pay for a survey again if I ever move home. This video is sponsored by Tradeify, an all-in-one job management application designed specifically for tradespeople, and it's available on both mobile and desktop. I would highly recommend it to any busy tradesperson who doesn't want to spend their evenings and weekends raising quotes, dealing with incoming inquiries, managing invoicing and timesheets, arranging appointments, and lots of other admin tasks, as it will save you time, and it means that you can focus on the things that you'd rather be focusing on. For a free 14-day trial, use the link in the description box below, and if you'd also like to get 50% off Tradeify for three months. Once the trial expires, you can use my promo code RAG and Bone when you sign up. And finally, how much did the re-roofing project cost in total? For scaffolding to be erected around the bungalow and taken away at the end, the cost was £980 and we were told that we could have it for as long as we needed it. The quote from the roofers covered pretty much everything else on this project, so all of the labour and materials, the roof tiles, the membrane, lead, sand and cement, damp proof coarse plastic, etc, etc plus the skip hire and waste removal too. And the total cost for that was 11,200 pounds. I reckon about 4,000 of that was for the clay tiles, which were the Santoft Neo Pan tiles and the Ridge tiles. For the carpentry side of things, initially we were quoted 3,000 pounds for labor and materials, but that was basically a worst case estimate given to us by someone who didn't actually come to see the job which didn't really inspire confidence to be honest. But shortly after that was when Robin Clevett offered to come and help us out. And as much as we wanted to pay Robin and Ed for their time, Robin wasn't having any of it. He said he didn't want paying anything. He's just the nicest guy and a true friend and obviously I can't thank him enough for that. And Robin, just in case you're watching, if there's any way I can ever help you out, just shout. If not, I will be forever in your debt. We obviously paid for the timber though, which came to a total of 400 pounds and a few pence. That was for eight 4.2 meter lengths of eight by two and eight six meter lengths of six by two. But that's not the end of the story because first obviously the ceiling damage needs to be repaired and we got a quote from our plasterer for new plasterboard to be installed and the ceiling to be skimmed. The total cost for that is going to be £622. On top of that I've asked the roofers for an additional £80 to cover new loft insulation, paint for the ceiling and redecorating which we'll do ourselves. So that's £702 for repairs which the roofer will cover the cost of. And you know I like to save money wherever I can, so I've been salvaging all of the old roof tiles that are in decent condition, and we will try to sell these on. Unfortunately though, our local reclamation yards aren't interested in these particular tiles, so we'll try to sell them privately, and hopefully we'll get about 50p each for them. We already have about a thousand of them here, so hopefully that's 500 pounds. Our roofer has offered to buy our old ridge tiles, and that should bring in about 160 pounds. We've also got all the old lead that was ripped off the roof, and I'll be weighing that in at a local scrap metal yard. They're currently paying £1.46 per kilo and I reckon there's about 60 kilograms in weight here so that's about £100. Add it all up and the total is £12,580 and hopefully we can knock 910 off that by selling the tiles and the lead bringing it to around £11,670. And you know I like to save money where I can. So we'll sell them privately hopefully. Total expense of the project is around 